Hi everyone, it's Stefan from EBC Brakes and welcome to our Tech Talks video series. So I'm here with Steve Payne today down at our Bristol Friction Factory. Steve, what are we going to be talking about? Well hi, yeah, Steve Payne, I'm a Research and Development Manager here and um, we're going to introduce the full range of automotive friction materials, starting with the standard black OE replacement pad and right through the range to full track race material. So I'm going to be asking Steve some of the most frequently asked questions about our pad compounds and he's going to be giving us the answers. So let's get into it. So in today's episode we're going to be talking about our red stuff compound. So I'm going to hand you over to Steve for a brief overview and then I'm going to get into some questions. So Steve, can you tell us about the red stuff? Yeah, sure. This is the, uh, the red stuff pad. It's a uh, road legal low dust pad. Okay, and what kind of vehicles is this pad aimed towards? Uh, this is aimed towards well, street, street vehicles, um, prestige vehicles, okay. um, vehicles usually up to around the 200-250 brake um, and particularly vehicles with alloy wheels where uh, dust would be an issue. Okay, and are these an upgrade over OEM? They are an upgrade over OEM, yes. They're, they're, they're still R90 approved in the same way as the, uh, the Ultimax pads are, so they're, they're comparable to OEM in terms of um, frictional performance. Uh, they have enhanced life and reduced dust. Okay, and there's a bit of a perception online with the red stuff that because they're red, they're for track use. And that's not the case. No, no, so, it's not. They're, they're, a, they're a street pad. Um, there are several materials beyond red in the range which are track suitable um, but red for in most instances would not be track suitable. Okay and how do you stop the friction material coming off the back plate on these pads? Well these pads have this NRS retention system where we literally draw hooks of metal up out of the backing plate which provide a mechanical attachment for the friction material uh, and then over the top of these hooks we apply uh, an adhesive as well so they're, they're bonded on and they're physically retained as well, so they're extremely well stuck onto the backplate. Right, so as well as being a very low dust formulation, will these pads cause any squeak or are they quiet? They're, they're a quiet pad, 99.9% um, .9 of the time. We never guarantee 100% squeal free because you can't and neither can any of our competitors, to be honest. Um, unlikely to get squeal, they're, very, they're a very quiet pad in, in the majority of applications. Okay. And obviously red stuff is different than the rest of our compounds. What is it that makes it so low dust and of quite a quiet pad? Well, that really is down to the, uh, the blend of ingredients in the compound. Um, and that is uh, the thing we guard most secretly. So I'm not going to no, tell you. No, no, that's fine. <laughs> um, can I install these on old discs? You can, um, you can, and as you see on the front of the pad here, we have this break-in compound, which is a, a thin layer of material which is um, painted onto the front of the pad. Uh, this is an abrasive material which will help the pads to bed in more quickly to a, to a worn disc or uh, potentially a rusty disc. So yes, you can install them on, on old rotors. And I know it's very hard to say because there's a lot of anomalies that come into play, but how do these pads wear? Have they got a relatively long life, or is it just too hard to say? Well, it's very hard to say because um, it depends almost entirely on the on the uh, the driving style. Um, the same set of pads could last five thousand miles or forty five thousand miles, depending on how they're driven. Uh, it really is, you know, the range is that yeah. big. But in, in general terms, they're, um, they're, they're hard wearing. In, in fact, it has been suggested they last a little bit too long, which is uh, not great for business. <laughs> but um, they're, 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 they're a good hard wearing pad. Um, so these come with the braking coating. Uh, what is the bedding procedure for these pads? Uh, best thing to do with bedding procedures is to refer to the information that comes with the pads. Uh, it's, it's, in, it's in every box of pads we sell. Um, but in, in, in basic terms, we're trying, in bedding, we're trying to match the surface of the pad to the surface of the disc. Yeah. If a disc is used, it will be uneven, so it takes a little while to get proper contact between the pad and the disc, and until you do, you won't develop the full friction performance of the pad. Um, so the main idea is to run without doing anything too drastic, not anything too fast or any um, emergency stops unless you have to, obviously. Um, for the first 
500 miles just to um, just to seat the the pad into the disc properly. Um, it's not a race pad, so you shouldn't need to go through thermal cycling as you do with some of the, the high end pads. Uh, so that sort of 500 miles of gentle use um, should should bed them in nicely. Okay, perfect. Well, thank you very much, Steve, for giving us more of an overview and answering some questions on the red stuff. Um, next episode, we're going to be talking about the green stuff. Uh, so we'll see you then.